my kid actually, uh, my my eleven year old, he remembers the days before carnivore, and he says, "Daddy, I like you so much better now." <laughs> Marcus, how did you find carnivore? Well, that is uh, my favorite question in the world, and I, I knew that question was coming, so uh, I thought about it a few different ways. I, I kind of think about it like, yeah, like a like a how did you find Jesus kind of moment where. Uh, I heard about carnivore, you know, maybe for a few years, but then I really came to it uh, about a year ago. Um, yeah, uh, I love to say long story short, but this is, you know, this is the fullness of the story. Um, this really goes back to my, my whole journey, I should say, goes back to 1999. Uh, so I was in a car accident. I was in the passenger side. Um, of the vehicle. It was in high school. It was, you know, one of the last days of school. We we're excited. We're leaving. And, um, yeah, my friend is driving. I'm in the passenger seat. And, uh, you know, we, we had to stop short behind uh, a vehicle that stopped short behind a vehicle in front of it. And then uh, the car behind us had to stop, but the car behind them kept going, which launched that car into our car, which launched our car into the car in front. It was a kind of a mess um now when that was happening i remember i heard screeching tires i'm you know 17 18 years old i'm curious so i turned my head to look like this and in that position got launched forward so that right there pretty much wrecked uh, about three or four areas of my spine um i lost track of the elvis and that i i don't really know uh all i remember is that um you know the between the workers comp doctors and my doctors and the insurance doctors they all agreed i had um you know permanent nerve damage permanent spinal damage um developed uh you know traumatizing and arthritic um discs uh, as well as um yeah, so some other damage uh, that was there. So here I am, 17 years old, and looking at the future as, hey, what if I do live to 80 years old? That means I'm going to be in constant pain for the rest of my life. Okay, that didn't sound like fun, but it's what I had to deal with, pain management. So for you know, fast forward for the next um, you know, 20 years, you know, I've been on you know pain medications, um, physical therapy attempts, and I say attempts because because of where the injuries were located, it's very hard to do physical therapy because one exercise would then put another area of my spine in traction. You know, it would just hurt you know that much more. Um, so that was very very difficult. It required a lot of medication in order to do any kind of physical therapy. Um, after, I mean, I actually, I wound up turning to um, drugs and alcohol for a time and just to try to numb it out on top of them. And so it was just, just chemical after chemical. It was, you know, depression, the whole nine. Um, then it eventually, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a firm belie you know, believer in you know, spiritual and all that. And I know my, my parents were, you know, praying for me and that kind of thing. And I believe that, you know, somewhere along the way, um, I got the inspiration to just kind of take a look at life in general as it was going and saw that this is just no way to live, you know? So being that I could see what I was doing, uh, I have some friends that are envious of me because I was also smoking cigarettes at the time, you know, trying to be so cool that I was smoking the camels without a filter. So I literally took the filter off and smoked them that way, like just to give it an extra umph or something. I don't know. Um, but my friends were jealous because I was able to one day just kind of look at that cigarette and say, what am I doing? I put it down, threw that pack out, never picked up a cigarette again. Now that was uh, maybe about um, yeah, close to 20 years ago at this point. It was like more like 15, somewhere between 15 and 20. So again, in and out of pain medications, but now I was able to take the medication as I needed it instead of just taking it to uh, kind of numb life in general, as I was doing. You know, from, uh, from that point, uh, I've, I've tried my own physical therapy. I kind of developed my own uh, sort of a, a, you know, stretching routines and strengthening routines. I don't know if you've seen um, the movie, the, the Kill Bill movies from you know, Quentin Tarantino. 
um, a few years ago. I, I don't know. I think it was the the second one where she was in a coma. She was waking up from the coma, and she like she she was trying to will herself to move. Like she just just get the toes moving a little bit. That's kind of you know what I wound up doing, just finding, just building this mind muscle connection. Now throughout this time, um, I was gaining weight, just getting fatter, you know, because you you can't really that kind of the spinal injury, you can't really work out like everybody else does. So you know, and also I didn't know at the time that my diet was such a major factor. Um, so I would work out when I could. And then when I did get the, the, the right combination of, it was a good day where it wasn't too cold and it wasn't raining, and I had the right mixture of medications, then I went ahead and I went to the gym. And when I would go to the gym, I would work out every muscle that I could, and then I would be laid out basically for a week, you know, because um, just the pain and just the recovery was just horrible, horrific. But I kept doing it over and over for years. Um, eventually, I want to say it's maybe about... Seven or eight years ago, uh, I encountered keto. Um, so I said, okay, keto, anti-inflammatory. I'm very inflamed. I'm taking all this stuff plus ibuprofen and that. And uh, let me try to bring this inflammation down. Now, I didn't really understand the fullness of inflammation. I just said, okay, well, you know, when you have a headache, that's considered inflammation. And you take an ibuprofen or whatever it is. I said, inflammation, my spine's inflamed. Let me go ahead and do this keto diet. So I did the keto diet. Um, I wouldn't say I entirely did it correctly, but I did get some positive results. The reason I say I didn't do it entirely correctly is because I would do it really well for about two weeks. And then I would reward myself with a McFlurry from uh, McDonald's. <laughs> I did such a good job. I deserve a treat, you know? So, you know, because all those cravings were there, like, oh, you know, uh, and then I, I started uh, mixing in the idea of intermittent fasting because then, you know, once you start, uh, I, I guess this is the positive side of the algorithm, right? So once you start looking at some of these videos, I started looking at keto, and then a lot of, you know, keto friendly folks are into fasting and intermittent fasting. So I started learning about that, Jason Fung and all this. Uh, and then I saw a carnivore every now and then, and I, I would watch like one you know, short carnivore related video. I was like, oh, that's crazy. I can't do that. <laughs> it's no, that's too extreme. And I'll stick with keto because, you know, I'm thinking what everybody else is thinking. Um, where's the fiber coming from? You know, you got you got to have some kind of vegetables. There's, there's no nutrition in that. Meat only. Are you kidding? So, uh, so I, I on and off keto for a while. And then I just went off of keto because I was just bouncing around too much. And um, I started to develop some digestive uh, issues uh, to the point where the doctors couldn't actually figure out what was going on. And at that point, I started gaining weight again. Now, I'm a small guy, uh, five foot five. And um, you know, I got up uh, pretty close to 190. I was about 186. Now, while that may not seem like a whole heck of a lot to some people, number one, it's on a small frame. Uh, number two, I'm dealing with all that spinal damage from before. So all that weight is just pulling down just daily on my spine. I'm at a level 10 pain level every single day, smiling just because I don't want to get other people depressed. You know, uh, I don't want other people to feel sorry for me. I want them to, you know, live their lives and enjoy life, you know, when they're around me. So, um, but yeah, just absolute misery every single day, every moment of every day. Um, my my kid actually, uh, my my eleven year old, he remembers the days before carnivore, and he says, "Daddy, I like you so much better now." <laughs> so then, yeah, you know, I'll kind of get to that. So as um, when I I just came to another one of those wake up sort of moments where I said, I'm just getting bigger, and I know at least keto can bring me back to where I need to be. So I'm thinking, what is going on with me? Um, I, I didn't also realize that um, when the hormones are out of whack, they will send you wacky messages, and they will send you cravings that you probably shouldn't be having. Like, that's not the right tuning that you should have in your body. But I was trying to like follow, oh, well, Oh, absolutely. Like McFlurries, like Oreo cookies, like all sorts of things. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> um, so I, I decided, you know what? I know that stuff is not good for me. I have to stop. So it was just pure, sheer white knuckle grip strength to say, all right, I need to just at least get back to keto. So then as I was getting into keto, um, I fasted again. I came out of the fast, went back into keto. And then um, uh, all of a sudden, I couldn't get out of bed. Uh, well, first of all, uh, there was um, one week where I couldn't get out of bed uh, due to the pain level in my spine. Then the next day after that, I was walking, I was picking up, um, it was like a, a small shopping bag with a couple of clothes in it. And then I just collapsed to the floor. My legs completely gave out on me. I, I thought that's it. I, I broke something. I, I'm, I, I'm paralyzed. I couldn't get off of the floor for a few hours. Nobody else was home. Um, I waited until my wife did get home. She saw me on the floor. We went to the hospital. And um, so that was a scary moment that also kind of made me continue with keto, say, okay, I have to do something to get myself better. Uh, then maybe about a month and a half after that, um, all of a sudden I couldn't get out of bed again, but for a different reason. Now my, my stomach was just in horrible, horrible shape. I thought, okay, maybe it's a stomach bug or something. And that lasted about, it went into about two weeks, then three weeks, then a month. I had a hard time eating. I couldn't eat anything. Then I started bleeding every day. Like, you know, I just look in the toilet every day. There's blood. I said, this is a problem. So went to the doctor, went to the specialist. You know, they explored me every which way while I was knocked out. Of course, I wouldn't have had it any other way. And um, they couldn't find exactly what was going on. They had me, sw I don't know if you've ever experienced one of those, uh, those pill cameras. So they, they, so they had me swallow a pill camera. The, the thing looks like a mini submarine. My mind goes back to the, I think it's an eighties or nineties movie inner space, you know, where they, they shrunk the, the giant like submarine down and <laughs> went into the person. So I swallowed the pill camera. I wore this, um, this kind of electronic belt or something that's supposed to track all the movement and, you know, take pictures and transmit back and forth. And they actually got no data out of it because that thing was in my system so long that it lost power. So they lost the camera inside of me. <laughs> they never found it again. I guess it came out at some point because that was over a year ago. Um, and uh, so that, that was interesting. So, but it turns out that they, they basically diagnosed me with um, stomach paralysis, which meant that nothing was really moving at a proper pace. Um, it wasn't like constipation or anything like that, but I couldn't eat. I could barely eat anything. I am. And, and I felt starving and full at the same time, all the time. You know, sometimes when you're hungry, you have a craving for this or that. I couldn't even have a craving because I felt full, but yet I felt hungry. And I mean, my body was absolutely starving for nutrition. Um, so, I said, okay, let me, let me try. It's, I can't move. I had to quit work. Um, I couldn't work anymore. Um, I said, I have to try something extreme. This, the, uh, this is an extreme situation. I have to try something extreme or basically I'm going to die. I mean, I didn't really see any other possibility because I was withering away and I couldn't eat. So um, here we go. I started exploring you know, Ken Berry's channel. Started exploring Dr. Baker. I land on Dr. Chaffee, who's uh, you know plants are trying to kill you. So I was like, yeah, I guess I guess they kind of are. <laughs> so, so I said, all right, let me let me try this. I mean, even though I can't really eat anything, let, let me try this. So um, I forgot what I had first. It was like a piece of chicken or steak or or something, but just like little small bites. And within I'd say within about two days, everything turned around. All of a sudden, everything felt right inside. I felt I had more energy. I was sleeping better. I was up on my feet. Um, within about, you know, uh, I'd say within two weeks, I was actually running around with my kids. Now, my younger son is five years old, so he hasn't experienced too much of the old one. I mean, he, he, he did experience the old me, but too young to really grasp it. But, um, I mean, I'm racing my 
at that time he's 10 years old now 11 uh just racing him up and down the street we're just literally running everywhere and running is something i haven't done since before that accident in 99 and this only took two weeks to turn around so you know i still had cravings and everything like that you know just i i couldn't you know bring myself near uh, the bakery section at a grocery store at that point because i would have been too tempted um but then um the I guess the other thing that made me uh, not want to necessarily go back to the way it was before was um, you know, that carnivore transition period when you go at it really strong, when it's like all or nothing approach, your digestive system tells you it's an all or nothing approach. And so I didn't want to go through that experience again. So I said, okay, well, if I went through that to come here, I'm probably going to go through that to go back. So let's just avoid all that. So I just, I, I grinned and bared it for the next couple of weeks. And then after that, you know, no matter how much my friends tried to tempt me, because they tried hard, like, you sure? They're like waving the stuff in front of my face, you know, you sure you don't want this cake? You sure you don't want this pizza? And, uh, you know, just no more cravings, just literally no more desire for it. Um, I'm almost one full year. I'm actually, let's see, today's Sunday. On Tuesday, it will be 365 days since I went carnivore. And just life is a hundred percent, a thousand percent different. Uh, I feel like I'm 15 years old again, just with all the energy I have, uh, the mental clarity, you know, the brain fog I had for 20 years. I didn't realize how much it was affecting me until all of a sudden I was super productive at work. Um, so I got like a, like multiple kind of promotions, you know, at work, um, you know, teaching, so okay so here's my typical day my typical day is I, I do my my day job then i come out of there and then i do multiple hours while well, i drive for like an hour and then i teach uh guitar and piano um like bounce around house to house for the next couple of hours so i'm essentially working like i don't know 16 17 hours a day <laughs> and, uh, and that's why i'm on the road right now i can actually kind of pan over i got the uh, guitar in the back seat there <laughs> so so after this, I'm going to, I'm going to go to teach. Um, but it's like, it's it just, it, it just feels like it, it doesn't, it's not wearing me out. It's not depressing me. It's not pulling me down. I just feel like, yeah, okay. What's the next thing? Okay. Yeah. I'll go ahead and do the next thing. It's because my body is so satisfied nutritionally. I've never felt this before carnivore. So if you ask me, are you sure you won't go back? You know, maybe, you know, you do this for a little bit longer and then you go back yeah no <laughs> there's it's just night and day there's no way i could possibly go i mean what go go back to feeling like garbage no thanks so well congratulations and a happy upcoming anniversary thanks. um but like i i'm just 20 20 odd years of being mm -hmm. in constant pain and then yeah. within two weeks it's just gone yeah like whoa it, i i mean how, I'm a, how do you feel about that yeah i, I was um so I, i'm you know hispanic latin uh heritage you know you, you you're taught to be the strong man and everything like that uh but i literally cried that day when i woke up and it didn't take me five minutes to put my socks on it didn't take me another three minutes to try to get my leg in my pants or to just sit up in bed, period. I mean, I, I, all of a sudden I was moving around just one morning and I literally cried. Like I, I sobbed, you know, and um, it's just I I forgot what that felt like. I, I didn't I never never even entered my mind that it would be possible to not feel pain. I mean, sometimes I overdo it now. It's like, I feel like I'm making up for lost time. <laughs> I'm overdoing things. Then I'll get a little twinge or something, but that's just because I overworked myself. It's like, okay. And then I remember what I, you know, whatever exercise I need to do in order to work out that little muscle group or whatever it is, then boom, I, I pop right back to normal. And just, it's the, the pain is gone. That's just incredible. Yeah. It's, um, it feels like if you're just talking to anybody about something like this, um, it it can feel. I mean, maybe like, well, okay, so you know, you can put your socks on or something. Big deal, right? I've got I've got bigger fish to fry. I've got bills to pay. I've got blah blah blah. But you don't realize how big an impact that kind of stuff has on your life until it's happening, right? 
Absolutely. Like, I, I didn't even put your socks on. And, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't realize how much time I was essentially losing every day, you know, due, due to this. Um, because I would say, all right, I, I have to leave the house at, uh, let's say, nine o'clock in the morning. All right, that means I have to make sure that I wake up at seven so I have enough time to get out of bed. Then, yeah, put, put the socks on, put the pants on, put whatever, you know, take care of my hygiene. And, um, you know, people make the jokes about, you know, like uh, the wife or something like that taking a super long time to leave the house. But no, that, that was me, you know. My wife was always with it. She was always able to get ready really quickly. So we had kind of the opposite thing happening there. Um, but and yeah, but now I'm I'm back to the stereotypical, all right, honey, you coming down yet? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> um so so like how have you got to this point as far as with your eating? How are you eating day to day? Sure. Well, um, you know, I, I, I saw, you know, various people talking on, on, you know, the different groups and things like that as I was getting in that at some point you kind of, you know, your body starts sending you the right signals to let you know what you, know, you need. And I, I found that as I experimented with that a little bit, um, I, 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 I'm now basically eating according to what my body what my body needs. So if I, for example, am lacking maybe a little bit of energy that day, it's like I, I could use a, a little boost. Like where it used to be running to the local Dunkin' Donuts and grabbing a cup of coffee. Uh, now it's a matter of okay, how much salt am I going to add to my water today? You know, uh, so I'll do something like that. Um, if I'm uh, or maybe if I'm just if I'm lacking a little general strength and I don't want to eat a full meal. Just basically, I just need just a little something that it just feels like I'm where I want to be here. I feel like I'm right here. So I don't need a whole, you know, pound of steak. You know, I'll have a, a couple of chicken legs or something. Um, aside from that, uh, you know, I, you know, make scrambled eggs for my kids almost every morning. Um, so I whip up maybe, you know, eight to 10 eggs. I give them about two eggs worth because that's about what they can handle. And I eat all of the rest. Uh, and then later at night, you know, I'm cooking up, um, you know, chuck roast, uh, you know, you know, bottom kind of stuff. You know, I look for, you know, the, the fattier, cheaper cuts because when you're eating this every day, you have to try to be economical about it. Um, so I, I probably eat on average, you know, maybe about, um, a pound and a half to two pounds of meat, you know, daily, mostly like 90% steak and the rest, uh, maybe eggs, um, chicken really doesn't do much for me. I, I just, I don't feel, you know, elevated when I eat chicken, but sometimes it just fills in a, a little, a little gap of something, but the eggs themselves do a, a great job. And, um, the kids, uh, the kids, are you know, benefiting from it as well with the eggs and stuff that you're cooking. So that's good. I, I remember when my daughter was really young and she's still in a high chair and like, she would wake up early. And I was always the one getting up early. So I'd kind of sit her at the end of the kitchen in a high chair and I'd be cooking up the eggs and stuff. I'd, I'd feed her eggs. She loved it. It's just like kids naturally want to eat this stuff. You know, you put the broccoli down for them or something like that. And they're like, yeah, they don't no, want it. This is, what are you trying to do? Poison me? <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, the, Dr. Chafee is saying the things that the kids want to say, but are too afraid to say to their parents. <laughs> Exactly. And he has a science to back him up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how about your wife? Is she happy for you, but she's not into this? Or is she somewhat getting into carnivore and eating more meat? No, she's, um, as a result of this, um, I'll keep it PG. She's a happy wife. and um, But she's, she's happy that, uh, that I'm in this. Because um, she, she did see that turnaround you know, with, with keto as things were starting to come through. So she was happy for that. 
but she also saw my back and forth with that. So when I decided that's it, I'm going carnivore. I remember uh, she told me, she says, okay, so how long are you going to do this? How long are you going to stick with this for, you know? And so I'm like, don't, don't say it like that. Come on. You know, but it was, it was kind of what I did. It's like, I showed her that pattern with keto. So, you know, what's going to be different here. Uh, but within, within the first month, she and I both knew that this was it. Um, because everything turned around, everything changed. I was productive around the house. Um, I mean, she was really, she was doing the lion's share of the work, everything that needs to get done between laundry, between shuttling the kids around, um, just everything. Um, I'm very, very grateful, you know, that, that she was there to, you know, to take care of that and that she did it. Um, yeah, we had a, you know, we had our, our tips every now and then, um, some, you know, some arguments back and forth because that, that's a very frustrating thing to have to do. Uh, but, um, but, you know, as I turned around and as, as my life is turning around here, um, I became finally the dad that I wanted to be the husband that I wanted to be, you know? And, uh, so my family is very, very grateful for it. Um, my wife might be going on carnivore. Uh, pretty soon, may or may not be. Um, she has uh, an issue in in her foot where she may have to get surgery. That's going to um, have her bedridden for they estimate about a month or so. So she's starting to think in terms of okay, what's going to give me the best chances of healing? Um, what's going to you know what, what's going to really make the most sense? And if I'm in bed, what's my husband going to feed me? <laughs> so, steak, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so if she does then if she, if she's still on the fence about it but um you know she knows that it's it's the nutritious way to go she knows it's the right thing the right way to go i know uh this is actually very different from what it was um you know months ago when she said look i know it's healthy but you're not going to take my pasta away from me you're not going to take my delicious food away from me. Um, but now she's thinking more in terms of uh, long-term health and longevity, which is a good thing. Nice. Um, so how about in terms of friends and extended family? Is anyone kind of, uh, you mentioned that they were trying to tempt you earlier on, but like, how are things now? Has anyone gone, you know what, you're doing really well. I might want to give that a try myself. Sure. Great question. Well, you know, um, it, it's, it's as things for some reason normally are. It's, um, I, I have one or two every now and then that are genuinely curious because they saw the bigger me and now they see the much, much smaller me <laughs> and uh, they say, wow. And, and they, they see the difference of how I was. Um, yeah, I don't think I mentioned this, but um, you know, amidst everything, even as early as I'd say about a year ago, like a year and a half, a year and a month ago, um, I was walking around with a back brace and a cane because it was really hard to get around. Uh, so they see that massive, massive difference. And so I have, you know, one or two every now and then that asked me a little bit, uh, a little bit of something. Um, then I have others who are like, yeah, that is so great that that's working for you. <laughs> I could never do that. <laughs> It's like, yes, you can. You really, really can. But, you know, you, you can't force people. So I try to be as inviting as possible. I, I consider myself, I mean, I, I'm I'm a, uh, an associate pastor at my church, so I'm an evangelist in that sense. But I also consider myself a bit of a carnivore evangelist as well. Because, you know, hey, if the door opens, I'm there, you know. That's just, you know, especially when it comes to my friends and family. It's like, you saw you saw me before. You see me now. The only thing that changes the way that I ate. That's it. That's an amazing contrast to see you go from a back brace and a cane to running down the street after your kids, right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember it was kind of chilly that day too. And, you know, any time that I'd be walking, I mean, if it was chilly outside, even if it was nice and, you know, we had the temperature up inside, I would still feel that my back would be tense and that would just lead to more pain, let alone being outside when it's cold. Um, but yeah, I remember it was chilly that day. I was wearing a t-shirt. My son was wearing a t-shirt. We were, uh, we were actually, we were walking down the block from one of my guitar lessons. They just happened to come out with me. It was a nice day that day. And I had a little extra time in between lessons. 
So I knew that there was a, there was a butcher near one of my students' houses that I wanted to check out. And, um, yeah, we, we ran there <laughs> and my son was absolutely thrilled through the roof because he's the same one that, you know, before saw me, no, oh, no son, I'm sorry. I can't carry your bag. No son, I can't do this. No, I can't do that. Um, you know, you want to play. I can't do that till later. Maybe, you know, let's see how my back feels. And now it's not like that anymore. That's awesome. So, um, I guess going forward, it's just kind of all the way, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I mean, as long as the, uh, they don't do weird things to the food supply and cut, cut us off from that, uh, yeah, um, it's carnivore all the way. Um, and a uh, uh, quick note, my, um, my older son, like, he saw the difference. He's like, uh, you know, I want to get better sports and everything like that. I want to try to go carnivore. So I was like, okay, well, you know, make sure. Make sure that you, you know because you, you know what daddy went through in the first week. <laughs> So dad was at the bathroom like every day. So anyway, um, caveat for whoever's jumping on, just know that you want to do this. Um, and he said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. So he, he grinned and he bore that, you know, that, that transition. He made it through the transition, uh, had a couple more days. And then right after that was a friend's birthday after a friend's birthday after a friend's birthday. And I think the social pressure was a bit too much, you know? So he's like, dad, I had cake. I was like, okay, look, you know what? You're young. You don't have any metabolic problems right now. If you want to revisit this later, we can don't feel forced, (laughs) but he says, you know, maybe over the summer. So again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to force him. At the same time, I, I do cringe every time I watch the family eat anything other than meat, knowing what I know now about nutrition and how much there's like, you know, the plant toxins and everything like that, let alone what the sugar does. I, I cringe every time I see it. But, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to force it. I don't want them to hate me. But at the same time, they see my transformation. Even my, my, my little one is five years old doesn't really understand much he holds up a, a fruit snack in front of me and says daddy is this carnivore <laughs> but it's like, no no son that, that's not exactly carnivore it's like oh, okay i want to be carnivore like you i was like okay well, one day you know so we'll, we'll get there thankfully they are they're still metabolically i think healthy enough to be able to handle the stuff and then when they're you know at a point where they can actually for real make that decision um I think they're going to want to do it. If if one of your friends um, was to ask you, like, what should I do? I want to get this started. Um, you know, I've got some joint pain I want to take care of. Um, I, I want to lose some weight. What's the best way for me to get started with this? What advice would you give them? Yeah, I would totally say. So for anyone who's looking to get started, um, I will say there are three things that took me a little bit of time to learn that I really think were instrumental once I did learn them. Number one, uh, eat more than you think you need to eat. Otherwise, you're going to get hungry once you go through that, that nutrition and then the cravings and everything kick in. If you eat more than you need to eat, number one, it's going to give you the nutrition you need. Number two, it's going to help you avoid cravings and, and all those things of you know going down the wrong path. Uh, I said three things. Let's hope I remember them all. All right. <laughs> the the second is right. The more fat you eat, the more fat you lose. You know, I had sixty pounds of fat. I lost all of that in six and a half months. Um, gone because I kept everything fat heavy. Um, fat is nutritious. Fat is the is 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 gold. I mean, fat is what your body needs to move around. And then um, the third, eat muscle to gain muscle. You know, I was kind of, you know, wasting away because that, that's one thing that I was afraid of. It's like, okay, well, yeah, everyone says you need carbs to get muscle and stuff like that and, and power in the gym. And uh, I found that I have no problem when I go to the gym. When I go to the gym, I'm working out for an hour and a half, two hours. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I have responsibilities at home. <laughs> I, I should get there. Uh, so, you know, where before it'd be like, oh, I'm exhausted and I have to go home. You know, but now it's, it's oh, I, I have things I need to do. So I leave the gym, not because of getting exhausted, but because of responsibility. Um, and also it's, um, there's no soreness. I, I remember I, this actually, I, this blew me away. 
I went to the gym for the first time, like to do a real workout because again, I've been dealing with the back pain. I've only been able to do like partial workouts, but I did a full workout. I was actually testing myself. I said, all right, let me see how far I've gotten. And let me see if I'm going to be laid out for a week or something like that. So I pushed hard, 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 hard as much as I could. And I got home and yeah, I, I did wear myself out that day. I think it was like a three and a half hour workout. It was just insane. Um, I was expecting to just be hurting the next day. The next day I woke up, I was a little, a little bit stiff because my muscles were, you know, worked out, but I was still able to put my socks on. I wasn't in any pain. I wasn't even sore. I was like, how on earth is this possible? How can you not be sore after a crazy workout? Like everybody gets sore after a workout. How can it not be sore? And then I started going to the gym at that point twice a day. I, I literally carved out the time to go to the gym twice a day. Uh, I don't do that now. My time is, is uh, it's pretty you know, stranded. So now um, I rely on, you know, middle of the night. I use the, the, the push-ups app, you know, one of those apps that like, you know, say, all right, do 29 push-ups, then do 27, then do 25. So it's like, you know, then it adds up to being like a little over hundred push-ups or something like that. And it's just, it grows incrementally every time. So I'm at a little over a hundred push-ups in one of those workouts, um, which is doing fine for me. I want to head back to the gym. Um, but like knowing that I can do it and I haven't been able to do it for 20 years, uh, it's just, it, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm elated. <laughs> I don't even know the right word. Yeah. I, I can't even express how good I feel about that. Nice. Um, so can you talk a little bit about your YouTube channel? Where can we find you and what kind of videos are you doing and you've got coming up? Sure. So, um, the, the, what's coming up is a little in flux because it's just, as I get an idea, I want to go ahead and make something. So it's basically carnivore mark 81. Now, uh, the reason I had to put an 81 on there is because somebody else took carnivore mark on YouTube and they didn't do anything with it. It's a blank page. Like, come on, I could have used that, but, uh, <laughs> they got to it first. So carnivore mark 81. And, um, you know, so far it's a uh, couple, I have some videos up there about my experience, uh, some things that I've learned. Um, I have, uh, just like two or three long form videos and, and some chopped up shorts and things up there right now. Um, but I'm going to kind of continue that trend, you know, things that I'm thinking about, I, I'm, you know, maybe not as well versed in all the studies as, you know, some of these great, you know, uh, these greats like, uh, again, Dr. You know, Vadia, Dr. Baker, or any of these guys, I don't even have a doctor in front of my name. I'm not going to try to claim to be a doctor, but if I come across something, you know, I want to, I want to try to share it. Um, like I just had my labs done, uh, yesterday and I'm going to, I'm waiting for the results. So I'm going to be posting about that, uh, which is going to be, that's going to be an interesting video because I kind of had an argument <laughs> with my doctor last year and, uh, she was, she was very panicked about my LDL level. Cause at that point is I've been I was on keto while I was, while I went there. So my LDL was a little bit elevated. So she was super panicked, even though I was feeling better than I was. She's like, no, no, you, you have to take the statin. So before I, you know, accepted the statin, I decided to look it up and I looked up the, you know, all the, the, the side effects and all those sorts of things. I'm like, oh, man, almost everybody who was on statins, they have problems. You know, um, my wife, uh, was on a statin. And, uh, she wound up stopping because she's like, I, I can't think straight anymore. Like I, I can't, like my brain is not functioning. And I found out, you know, what was causing that. I'm like, yeah, I don't want that to happen to me. So, um, oh, and, and this, I didn't mention during our, our chat here. Uh, I was on seven medications uh, that I was taking three times daily. In addition to that, um, I was also taking a, I don't know if where you are, they have the GNC stores but they have the GNC branded vitamins where it's like a bunch in like this little pack. So I was taking the seven medications plus that whole little pack, which tastes terrible and smells terrible. But I was like, this is healthy. Right. <laughs> so I was doing all that every single day. Um, and, uh, and this time around when I went there, they were very confused. They said, okay, you've lost a lot of weight. I was like, yeah, yeah, I did. Say so you um, 
they were they're asking me all kind of questions how are you doing so they check my vitals my vitals are like spot on um like you you're in really good shape right now okay thank you um and then they started asking me about all those medications like nope i'm not taking that anymore hey how about this one nope not taking that anymore how about that one nope not taking that anymore <laughs> And they were thrilled that, oh, great, that's fantastic. You're not taking those. Then when it came to the statin question, said, okay, so are you taking that statin? I think it was a tortoise statin that they wanted me to take. And I said, yeah, no, I didn't touch the stuff. And that's when the conversation just kind of stopped yesterday. <laughs> they wanted me to take that statin so bad. I'm like, no, it's I, I did all this without taking statins or anything like that. I, you know, let's let's check my blood work. And uh, so I, before I went, I knew I was gonna get my labs done. So I looked for um, uh, Dr. Barry's um, uh, Common Sense Labs. So I downloaded that. Uh, there's also uh, Mike uh, Mutzel, High Intensity Health. Um, he's got a, a lab work cheat sheet. Uh, so with a combination of that, um, I got as full of the panel as I could possibly get. I said, okay, give me this, 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 and this. I felt like I was, uh, you know, Gordon Ramsay going into one of those restaurants saying, give me every one of your dishes. Let me try them out. <laughs> yeah. And so had the blood work done. I'm curious to see what's going to happen because, you know, I wanted to make sure I did that because number one, I want to know what, I want to know what's going on in my body. Number two, I want to be able to show the doctor or at least try to show her that um, the that one LDL number is not the end all be all. Like that's not the actual indicator. There's so much more. So I want to show her through all the other indicators. Ideally, now again, I don't know the results, but I'm guessing based on how I feel, it's going to come out pretty pretty darn well. Um, so you know, if there's anything there, then you know, I'll, I'll deal with that and work with that. But I really doubt that there is. It's always interesting to me when I talk to the doctors, you know, like the, um, and, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of getting used to having to have arguments with them as well, rather than just having a rational conversation. <laughs> but um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about anything, weight, your other numbers, anything at all. As soon as they see an LDL number that's elevated past what their expectations are, that's it. They cannot focus on anything else. And so, like, yeah, they lose so sight of get, it all. Yeah, they, you don't get. Oh, look! You looks like you're completely metabolically healthy. Um, maybe this number's a bit high or something like that. It's just look at this number. That's yeah. all they can focus on. Yeah. So I'll I'll link to your channel in the show notes. And Marcus, um, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with us. Thank you so I much. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely.